Good Friday evening, everyone. This is Mitch. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday so far, and I've had a great work week. We've been talking about this storm system all week, and it's finally cranking up, pouring snowing in places like Little Rock, Arkansas, as of 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in that region. This snow is already starting to creep towards areas like Memphis, Tennessee, in northern Mississippi and will continue to do so over the next several hours. So this is going to be the last really big update with this winter storm and it's going to be a big update for the severe weather. I know it feels like the severe weather has took a back seat here but it is going to be a dangerous night severe weather wise and as far as the tornado threat and damaging wind threat overnight for areas like the Panhandle of Florida, the Big Band area of Florida and into the southern areas of Georgia. This is going to be a significant severe weather threat overnight so please stay weather aware in that area i want to mention that in the beginning of the video we're going to talk about that too in the video but uh so stay tuned with me we're going to go over all the latest and greatest information and give you one really long last update on what is going on with the system i'm going to be storm chasing overnight here in my state here in south carolina and i might bring y'all some live updates even though it'll be overnight most people will be asleep if you're in the carolinas georgia Florida, I recommend definitely having a way to get alerts, definitely waking up every day for a couple hours, checking a local radar, and stay tuned with a severe weather threat. But a lot of snow for a lot of regions. So I want to remind you guys, if you guys have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. Appreciate the ongoing support. It's been a big time week as far as growth, and I really appreciate people and really all the nice comments. I really haven't had any negative comments this week, which is really surprising. I'm, so I really appreciate all the nice feedback. I love you guys so much. And thank you for giving me a platform to talk about what I love, which is the weather. Hit me up on social media, especially when it's active. We like to have a little fun on Twitter and Facebook, especially Twitter. I love to interact with you guys. And uh, it's a great way to stay up to date with the latest and greatest. If you guys got anything I can pray about, please continue to put it in the comments because me an opportunity to pray over it gives others an opportunity to do so too. And we can all look out for one another and glorify God doing it. So let's get going here. You got watches and warnings. Winter storm warnings up for Northwest Georgia. I started talking about a few few videos back that this was starting to trend into a hefty event for areas of like Northwest Georgia. And it really has. Winter storm warnings up for places of Georgia here in mid-March. Winter storm warnings up for all the northern counties of uh, Alabama and then a couple counties here in Mississippi and basically the entire eastern half of Tennessee winter storm warnings, eastern half of Kentucky winter storm warnings. The pink is the winter storm warnings by the way. I had to show uh, the actual National Weather Service site because the pivotal site was not up updated here but all the areas in purple like Areas like Memphis, Little Rock is in, which is ongoing snow right now. And Little Rock, uh, that is winter weather advisory. So winter storm warnings that stretch all the way to basically the furthest counties in Maine before you get into Canada. So active event, you got winter weather advisories also up for places like Birmingham, Alabama. It's just been being overlaid by the freeze warnings. So uh, let's get going here. First off, I want to show you this. This is the radar. This is what's going on right now. Now, I know you're she seeing uh, yellow and green. You're thinking, well, is it raining in these areas? No, that is heavy snow. You see all the snowflake icons? That's actually ground truth that is pouring snow in here. And uh, I don't have this fix where it's like an overlay of uh, the last really hour, but this precipitation has really exploded over the last hour. And it's a response to this low pressure really be, uh, starting to develop to its south. Therefore, you got one to two inch per hour rates falling in areas of Little Rock and all surrounding towns and cities. Memphis, this is knocking on your doorstep. Um, it might start off as a brief period of rain, but then it quickly goes over to heavy snow. And this is as of, this will be as of about 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, y'all's time out there in Memphis. Snow is knocking on the Arkansas, Tennessee doorstep. It is also snoring, snowing pretty good in uh, southeast Missouri. It's just not in the radar reflectivity right here. But this is snow, guys, and I'll show you here in the precipitation. Uh, this is snow falling, right? This is heavy snow falling, too. So this storm's cranking up. Um, you know, I had a couple people a few days ago, especially on TikTok. TikTok, they like to talk a little smack. That's okay. I just roll with it and like saying there's no way this storm's going to happen because it's been so warm. Guys, that does not matter. It really doesn't. Just like people people tend to say for whatever reason that um, you have a very hot spring, that, that means you're going to have a very hot uh, summer. Or you have a cold fall, that means you're going to have a cold winter. Weather doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. So, just remember that. Just because it's 70 degrees one day, that don't mean it can't snow the next. The weather has a mind of its own. So here you go. Let's talk about the severe weather here. This is for right now into 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow for this region. So this is an enhanced risk up for Tallahassee, Florida, southern areas of uh, Georgia, the entire Big Bend area almost of Florida, areas 
of the eastern areas, the Panhandle of Florida, slight risk all around here. This extends into Columbia, South Carolina, Columbus, Georgia, includes areas like Savannah, Georgia, and it's because of this tornado threat. You got this 10% risk right here of a tornado at 25 miles in any given location. I think there is going to be a tornado here overnight. This threat really gets kicked up just after midnight, Eastern Standard Time. It's not going happening right now. You have some severe weather ongoing in areas of Louisiana, but, you know, regardless, this is going to happen overnight. This is when the biggest threat's going to happen. So wind damage is going to be a thing here. So be careful. And then you have tomorrow. And really, this is for tomorrow morning into the maybe like just after uh, the noon or lunchtime time frame. Enhanced risk up here. And this is really for damaging winds. This includes Charleston, South Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, really, this is in response to a squall line that's going to move through here. So a tornado threat. It's going to also be in Florida, too, as a squall line is going to have embedded tornadoes with it. Dangerous setup here. You know, I don't want to just talk about snow, snow, snow. It is going to be a dangerous night for Georgia, maybe areas of southern South Carolina, but more importantly, uh, the Big Bend and the Panhandle of Florida. And then into the morning hours tomorrow for maybe just North Florida in general, it's going to have embedded tornadoes along the squall line. So let's talk about both kind of, right? So we can look at the HRRR model. Let's back this up to about, this is about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so about 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So here in the next couple hours. Snow has already moved into Memphis. Obviously, if you watch this video and it's like 10 p.m., you know, this is a couple hours previous to when you're watching it. But as we're getting going here, low pressure developing per the A, this is the HRRR model. You're getting going here in time. We're getting into about midnight. Look at this. We stopped this at midnight. It is snowing like crazy in the northern half of Mississippi, snowing really heavily for northwest um, Alabama. Uh, this rain begins to shift to snow around midnight-ish for areas like Huntsville, Alabama, and surrounding cities. To your west of Huntsville, it's done switch to snow, right? And then it's already switched to all snow for Nashville, Tennessee. And as this low pressure really begins to develop, and you'll see it here, the L re pops up here, you start to get this thing sub-1,000 millibar low. That, begin, that tells us that as this number is dropping right here, it's deepening, it's strengthening. So as we're getting into about 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, look at this heavy snow showing up for the plateau of Tennessee. Um, you got heavy snow starting to sneak into the far northwest counties of Georgia where you're under winter storm warnings. You got snow for all these counties in northern Alabama. Um, I had somebody get on to me about why you just call it northern Alabama. Guys, I don't know every single city in northern Alabama, but I can tell you the far, all the counties in northern Alabama are going to see snow and accumulating snow at that and potentially heavy snow. But as we're getting going here, look up here in Kentucky. It's all snow. West Virginia, snow breaking out. Uh, Knoxville, heavy snow. Chattanooga, potentially this changes to heavy rain to very heavy snow for a couple hours and then just moderate the light snow after that. We keep this going until about the, uh, let's stop this at the, about the 5 a.m. time frame. This is heavy rain, very heavy rain, changing to heavy snow for areas like Asheville, North Carolina, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's already been snowing for several hours. Northeast areas of uh, Tennessee, Western Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, the, the Eastern Kentucky into West Virginia, jackpot areas for sure, and then into the plateau of Tennessee. But look here. I want to back this up a couple frames, right? These are the warm sector cells you got to worry about in the panhandle floor for tornadoes. I mean, look at this. It's snowing in Birmingham, Alabama, or switching to snow as of 3 a.m. But then if you go a few hundred miles to your southeast um, into the panhandle of Florida, you have torn, uh, per, the potential for supercells that are producing tornadoes. That's how dynamic the storm is. I keep using the word dynamic, and that is because you have snow so close to very severe weather. And that's how these dynamic systems are when they're you got a low pressure that is on its way to strengthening. That's how it happens. It kind of reminds me of the January 3rd system um, that happened this year where you had a system that really trended more negatively at the last second. And then you had all that intense snow to happen and then the severe, a little low end severe weather here. I think this is a more intense version of that because I think the severe weather is going to be a big deal. So as we're getting into about 4 or 5 a.m., look at this squall line right here developing in the Midlands of South Carolina. This is dangerous. We have to watch how this trends here in the next couple hours. But at the same time, down here where you have better thermodynamics in place with still a low-level jet rapidly developing in response to this deepening low pressure out the south, 
southerly winds. They're going to have a spin to the atmosphere. Therefore, any of these embedded storms could produce a tornado. Dangerous, dangerous setup here. For my folks in the Northeast, I'm, I'm going to talk about y'all, I promise you. Hopefully, 10 minutes in, you guys watching in the Northeast haven't just uh, uh, skipped the video. But you know me, I'm going to get to you folks in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast because there's a lot to talk about you guys also in the winter weather side. But you got to talk about the severe weather because this is dangerous. You keep this going here, and there's an ongoing tornado threat along this line too. There's damaging wind threat will be the highest, but the tornado threat will be real. I want to stop this right here. Squall line moving through Raleigh, North Carolina, 150 miles to maybe to your uh, to your um, west. You got rain changing the snow. So guys, it's going to be kind of an event in the Carolinas tomorrow, where you know you're going to wake up and it's going to feel moist, almost tropical outside from the Midlands of South Carolina points east, especially the basically the entire eastern Carolinas and southeast Georgia, definitely Florida. You're going to wake up and it's going to feel kind of sticky. It's going to just going to feel like storms outside. But by the time you get to lunchtime, winds are going to shift out the northwest and the cold air is going to come through. And by the time you're uh, doing any Saturday night activities, evening activities, it is going to be feel downright like winter for a lot of folks. So you're going to start off feeling like spring. You're going to end the evening tomorrow in the Carolinas. It's going to feel like and it's going to feel like winter in particular, and, and, and it might be snowing depending on where you are, especially if you're in areas of North Carolina and Virginia. But you keep this rolling here. It's still snowing in West Virginia as you're starting to wake up around 6, 7 a.m. But look at this heavy, heavy rain. You might have something like around Richmond, Virginia, or just north of Richmond, Virginia, for example, just north of Danville, Virginia. You can switch from heavy rain and storms to maybe a burst of snow. And then, you know, you're getting into about 7 a.m., 8 a.m., Washington, D.C. starts to switch to snow, and I'll go on and shift up there here in a second. Let's go on and do that. So I don't want to get too far north. I want to get you all a better version in Washington, D.C., but we'll go on and fast forward to this time. I don't want to skip my folks in the southeast Ohio. Um, you guys, especially the southeast half of Ohio, basically the further southeast you can get, into the border of West Virginia. The closer you can get to the border of West Virginia and Kentucky, the heaviest the snow is going to get. So if you're in this area of Ohio, going to get hit hard. Pittsburgh, um, unfortunately, I was mentioning probably three days ago, y'all could get half a foot of snow. I don't think y'all are going to see that much anymore, but we'll see. I might be totally wrong. And it's because this low pressure has trended east. Therefore, y'all are more west now of the system. So for areas like in central Pennsylvania and eastern Pennsylvania, it's going to have a better chance at heavier snow. So we'll see how this works out here. But we're getting into 7, 8 a.m. as everybody's starting to wake up. Uh, this heavy rain is switching to heavy snow in northern VA, uh, central Maryland, all western Maryland for sure. Heavy, heavy snow. Um, and I'm talking about one, two inch per hour rates. You might have frontogenesis setting up here where you basically have you know, for example, I'll put a sounding right here at North VA, just uh, just uh, west of Washington, D.C. It's 29 degrees. The column is completely saturated, meaning the dew points are riding the temperatures. So you have big time snow uh, snowflake growth in here. That means basically what I'm trying to say is you're going to have snowflakes the size of half dollars, the size of maybe the uh, planet Mars or something. Just kidding. Falling out here. So. Um, rates are going to overcome, meaning it doesn't matter how warm the soil temperatures are ahead of this system. You're going to get insane snowfall rates that are going to coat the ground very quickly. So moving forward here, you're starting to get into the later, the mid to later morning hours. Around 10, 11 a.m., you're switching to heavy snow in uh, basically the entire state of New Jersey, just about. New York City switches to heavy snow. The east, western areas of uh, Long Island, heavy snow. And then, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, you are going to switch to all snow, if not all snow for the entire event. But then you start to watch areas of uh, southern New England. How quick do y'all switch to snow before the heaviest precipitation moves out? Well, I do think y'all will switch to snow in southern New England. But I think if you're in the western sections of Connecticut and Massachusetts, y'all obviously will stand the best chance to see heavier accumulations in New England in general due to the fact that Arctic air catches up with the moisture before it really moves out here. So Definitely a big time storm. We'll look at the NAM for the southern regions, and I'll speed this up a little bit because I think the AARR model is, is doing very well in the earlier cycle of the storm. But going through in time, same setup. We're getting into 9, 10, 11 p.m., getting to the midnight time frame. Snow moves into the late evening hours in Memphis, Tennessee. It's snowing in northern Mississippi. Probably the heaviest snow will probably occur later this evening into maybe about 1, 2, or 3 o'clock in the morning. Then the event is done. 
that's why, you know, it, you only got winter weather advisories for these areas right in here because the low pressure doesn't really get kicked up until it gets into Alabama and Georgia. And then that's when you get the heaviest returns precipitation wise. Therefore, you got heavier uh, moisture and uh, this linking up with this Arctic air. So heavier snow and more heavier snowfall accumulations. But low pressure is deepening on the NAM. This low, this, these nasty cells are beginning to develop down here in the panhandle of Florida. This is when the tornado threat really kicks in around 1, 2 a.m. in the Panhandle floor in the Big Bend with these warm sector cells ahead of the main energy. And this is always spells severe weather. When you have to can have discrete cells that develop ahead of the main low pressure right here, that's when you have the tornado threat. It's dangerous. But look at this. You've got this heavy snow in eastern Tennessee breaking out and then the heavy snow in northern uh, Alabama, and then it switches. I think... Chattanooga, for example, and I keep mentioning this because I'm pulling for you guys. I really am, you know, because you guys get screwed a lot when it comes to winter weather. I think y'all could go a couple hours of rain, probably, you know, through midnight, one, two, three o'clock in the morning, and then about three, four o'clock in the morning, y'all are going to abruptly shift to heavy, wet snow. It might not snow for a, you know, 12 hours, but it could be three, four, maybe five hours of very heavy snow that could really pile up quick. And the thing is, it's not going to warm up tomorrow. So it's going to probably melt, but at the same time, Arctic air filters in and it really, you know, puts that crunch factor on that snow as you're waking up your Sunday morning. But heavy snow into the southern Appalachian Mountains, heavy snow into eastern PA, heavy snow into West Virginia as you're getting into the sunrise hours. But look at the squall line on the man, guys. I'm telling you, this is going to be a damaging wind threat written. It has it written all over it. And you're getting into 7 a.m. This is the, this is the one I'm going to be chasing tomorrow. I'm going to be seeing what it's all about, and keeping everybody alert overnight for especially my state. And, you know, I started off talking about weather for South Carolina, so I'm always uh, looking out for my state here. So I'm going to be up and at it probably around midnight to 1 a.m. tonight, trying to figure out what's going on and chasing the worst part of this. But this is going to be a destructive, I think, in some parts of this line, a squall line moving through the really the midnight, uh, not the midnight, but the early morning hours. And then I think it could be cleared out. I really think it'll be on off the coast by um, – by really uh, probably noontime, but I think it will still be holding strong in areas of Florida. But look at this. The NAM has been showing this for a while. you got this squall line that moves through, right? And then you have snow that comes, that kind of backtracks through here and filters in and might give areas like Winston-Salem, Greensboro, maybe Raleigh, some back-end snowflakes tomorrow afternoon after experiencing a squall line in the morning. It's going to be interesting to see how that works. It really is. But, hey, it's showing up on the NAM. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I really wouldn't. Um, what the NAM looks like for the Northeast, let's keep this going. Uh, not much different than the HRRR model. Uh, it likes the idea of heavy snow, frontogenesis. Watch out. Heavy banding of snow in northern VA, western Maryland. And then um, it really just, you know, it really hits starting to show up where it's wanting to hit central Pennsylvania, uh, eastern PA very hard. And then heavy rain for Delaware and New Jersey might abruptly shift to heavy snow. I mean, heavy, heavy snow based off the NAM for your late morning, uh, early afternoon time frame. But look at this. It's raining like crazy, maybe even storming in Boston, Connecticut. But look how this Arctic air funnels in. Look at this deepening low pressure. I don't think it's going to be... We'll see how strong it's going to be. But it shows, for example, we'll freeze this for 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It shows this heavy rain abruptly shifting to heavy snow. For New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, uh, Long Island, where it could really dump some heavy snow very quickly on these areas. So um, I hate it. We're almost 20 minutes in the video just talking about snowfall accumulations. But look at this. Um, National Weather Service, as far as snowfall totals, um, they're no longer really conservative. I mean, they're conservative compared to some of the other models, obviously, but they're pretty much all in on a snowstorm. I mean, this is snowstorm criteria for Tennessee and northern Alabama and, and northeast uh, 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 Mississippi, definitely for this time of the year. I think Gallenberg is going to get hit hard. I think you guys, you know, for example, get four to six inches of snow. I wish I could pack up my family right now and head to Gallenberg. Um, I'm definitely more of a winter weather fan, a severe weather fan. I would love that. I would love to experience um, one last big time winter weather event. But, you know, life isn't that easy to just do that. But, um you know, the National Weather Service wants to say an inch or two of snow in Memphis, a couple, a few inches in Nashville, Tennessee. But then you get into the plateau and you're going to have widespread totals of over a half a foot of snow. 
In fact, I think areas of northern Alabama and maybe even northwest Georgia, someone could see four to six inches of snow. But obviously, you keep looking further north, and uh, this it's a pretty much sure bet that across West Virginia, southeast Ohio, eastern Kentucky, that you guys are going to have widespread overfoot totals. And uh, <clears throat> we look at the latest GEFS ensembles, and look how south they are. This is very impressive, guys. I mean, Atlanta's right in the here. You're starting to get a pretty decent GFS ensemble mean into Atlanta. I mean, just northwest of town, you you have winter weather advisories. I think winter weather advisories will be extended into Atlanta here in the coming hours. I would not be surprised at all. But look at this signal in Chattanooga. The GFS the GFS ensembles is showing eight inches of snow in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and in the valleys, widespread over half a foot um, snowfall totals. The plateau hit hard. Four to five inches showing up in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Two to three inches showing up in Memphis. I think Memphis, it's going to snow pretty hard in Memphis here. It, you know, it's going to be snowing probably by the time some people are watching this video. It's going to snow pretty good in Memphis. But look at the entire northern half of Alabama. You now have a couple inch snowfall mean in Birmingham, Alabama. It's wanting to give y'all a couple inches of snow. But, it, I mean, northern Alabama is, you know, well into a snowstorm if you're looking at this. Very impressive. Very impressive for northern uh, Mississippi, which has been showing for days now for that area. But look at northern VA now. Look at Washington, D.C. You have an ensemble mean of over of, of around six inches of snow. And just east, just west of uh, Washington, D.C., you have, you know, an, a mean of six to 12 inches of snow. West Virginia and these areas are going to get hit hard. We know that. But this is impressive. You look at the uh, European ensemble. It's a little. It's a lot more relaxed, right? And you can tell all them areas I just mentioned. You can basically cut all them totals in half. But in general, it still gives areas like Chattanooga two inches of snow. I consider that a win, and it gives accumulating snow from northern Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee, and we all know what's going to happen here. We've known this for days. We have. Um, but if you look at something like the H Triple R model, and this will probably be the last one I look at. And uh, we look at the 18Z, which is probably old information. In fact, we can probably go ahead and look at the latest run, and we can here. Um, I think it has a good idea. The reason I like what the ARRR model is showing is because it really highlights the plateau of Tennessee, uh, the plateau right here, um, and, you know, does a good idea of showing that, hey, these are going to be favorite areas for heavier snow. So... You know, look at the HRRR model, figure out where you are on the map. I think it's I think it's underdone for North Alabama. I really do. I think Huntsville, Alabama is going to see two to three inches of snow, just like what the National Weather Service is predicting them to see. But, you know, you look at this into northern VA, Maryland, Washington, D.C., several inches of snow. As of, you know, two and a half days ago, it was showing nothing for these regions. So it's very impressive to see. You go on up to the northeast, we all know the interior northeast is going to get clobbered. Interior New York State widespread foot totals are going to be, uh, you know, likely in any given spot, especially the higher elevations. Pittsburgh, um, Pennsylvania, the state of Pittsburgh. <laughs> I didn't even realize I said that this morning. That had me cracking up in the comments, y'all saying stuff. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I miss so many cities, guys, and I hate it. But I can't it just, there's so many cities in each state, and I really wish I could just consciously mention every single one of them, but it's so hard. But um, you know, Pittsburgh could potentially see four to five inches of snow. The entire state of West Virginia is going to see accumulating snow. North VA, the National Weather Service wants to give, you know, around two inches of snow for Washington, D.C. And then Maryland, my folks in Maryland, you guys are going to get a nice snow event. It's going to be winter's last hurrah. It really is. But you look at the ensemble mean for the GFS for these guys, look how much further southeast it is. It brings the bigger cities in play. There's a big difference between the National Weather Service and the ensembles. And I don't know if the National Weather Service is ever going to bite on plate on the big city seeing big snow like New York City, uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore. You know, I don't know if they are, but I think they should bite a little bit. But we'll see what happens. They are the professionals and they're going to go what they believe they think is right. But, um, you know, this is starting to creep towards these big cities for big time snowfall. And the reason this has big potential for these areas is because they're closer to the heaviest precipitation. Yeah, you're plenty cold enough for the interior northeast, but you don't have the heaviest precipitation. These areas around New York City, obviously, if you can get more cold air to clash in quicker with, uh, you know, heavier moisture being thrown into the I-95 corridor, then this has bigger potential. So we just have to watch to see what happens here. But big snowstorm for these areas right in here. I really think it is the interior northeast just um, 
just inland from the big cities, but it's trending snowier all the way into the beginning of this event for areas like Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, Boston. I, I, Boston, I think this is going to be just a minor to moderate event at most. But if you go into the western sections of Massachusetts, the, the far western sections of Connecticut, I really think this could be a bigger event for you guys for mid-March standards, I would say. But cold temperatures is a big story with this too, guys. You know, it can't be forgotten about. But, you know, these are low temperatures for Saturday morning. Tomorrow morning, snow will be falling for a lot of these places. But look at this. You got, you're waking up into the mid-60s, even 70s across the eastern Carolinas, far in southeast Georgia. The entire uh, state of Florida is waking up to summer-like temperatures uh, as far as low temperatures in the summer. But uh, you obviously move into the afternoon hours, and it'll be colder in these areas um, in the afternoon hours than it is in the morning. So and that's response to this Arctic front moving through here. And then we're getting to the morning hours, and then a lot of sections are going to be waking up with sub um, freezing temperatures all the way into the panhandle of Florida. So I think, you know, you folks could be seeing uh, tornadoes in the panhandle of Florida overnight tonight. By Sunday morning, you're waking up to sub freezing temperatures. But look at this. I think areas could float, uh, float, could flirt with zero degrees who have heavy snowpack in the plateau of Tennessee, West Virginia, Western v Virginia, and eastern Kentucky. I think some areas are going to flirt with zero degrees and definitely record shattering cold temperatures in these areas. But, you know, widespread freeze for everybody. And then I think it warms up very quickly next week. I really do. I think we just flip it right back to spring, and that's how it is in March. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't stay winter long in March. It really doesn't. You're not ever going to get a substantial Arctic blast that's going to last for five or six days. That's just not how it works in March, especially in the southeast. This is what I worry about. These are the severe storms popping up overnight, and I'll show you it one more time. Please watch out in the Panhandle of Florida overnight, especially just after midnight. In fact, go to sleep early and go on and wake up and just – I know you guys don't want to do that, but areas of Tallahassee, you know, the Big Bend area, uh, Valdosta, Florida, uh, Georgia, um, I meant to say, and just southern areas of Georgia, please be careful. Ahead of this line of storms, you're going to have some nasty storms that develop. And as this gets going here, it turns more into a linear look as we're getting into about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And it becomes a steady squall line moving through southeast Georgia and the Carolinas. And there can even be some embedded tornadoes with this. So please be careful. Everybody in the southeast tonight, this is a, this is a legit severe weather threat that's kind of, in my opinion, being a little overshadowed by the big time snow. Um, but we'll look at this. This is the significant tornado parameter. And uh, let me go on and click this here. And uh, you have values spiking down here just after midnight of, you know, uh, three to four. But anyways, just look at these colorful areas and just just basically look at these as in a height as a as a heightened area and time frame for when tornadoes can happen. You look here in the Big Bend area, there is going to be a tornado or two in this area. So this is going to be messy. You're not going to see it. It's overnight. It's going to be messy convection. It might be rain wrapped. But this tornado threat continues into North Georgia. Watch out, Jacksonville, Florida, and then even in the eastern areas of southeast Georgia and the Carolinas. Significant weather, crazy dynamic storm. It's going to make a lot of people happy with the snow, but it's going to be very dangerous for a lot of other people. So we're praying for the best. I hope this bust. I really do um, for areas of the Panhandle of Florida. But, guys, I love you. I appreciate you all. I appreciate the amazing support. I'll be out and about later tonight, and uh, I'll probably go live. I might, even though most people will be asleep. But like I said, if you're in the Carolinas, Georgia, and especially the Panhandle, Florida, please have a way to get alerts. God bless everybody. Stay safe, and I'll have you an update soon enough.